Hello, everyone, and welcome out to Maverick Trading. I'm Corey Halliday, and we're going to go through how to trade options on Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation platform. Their Trader Workstation platform is a more advanced platform. It's got some intricacies to it. I'll show you some shortcuts, some really great ways to build spreads and combos and a variety of different things. So without any further ado, Let's get to it. So I'm going to start by simply pulling up the Trader Workstation. Now, I'm going to be working off of classic TWS. Mosaic is very similar in nature. Uh, I've used the IB TWS platform for 20 whatever years, so I am classic in nature. I started using this before there was a Mosaic. So this is certainly my preferred area to do it. Anything that we trade, let, Google's in the news today, so we could type in Google's symbol, G-O-O-G. -O -O if we didn't know, we could type in Alphabet or the company name. Uh, Alphabet is the new company name for Google, but I still call it Google. If I click on the options, it'll pull up an option chain. You could, of course, trade directly from here. We could select, maybe we want to trade this option or whatever. Select whatever you want, and it will pull it up on your platform as follows. And then you could simply click to trade. Click on the ask to buy or click on the bid to sell. And as you do that, it'll pull up an order. If it pulls it up on a line like this, it's much like Excel. You can right click, you can discard, you can uh, adjust and change. Or I could double click on this line and you'll notice it'll pull up an order ticket. I kind of like uh, the order ticket because from here, I can kind of manipulate things and then add certain things like conditional orders. Let's say that I wanted to add a condition that Apple's price had to, or Google's price had to do something before I wanted this transaction to take place. Well, I could add the conditions and all of those elements. Um, we would change the time period. We would change the order type, the quantity of contracts, the price, and so on. Once you fill that out, like let's say that we were going to change the price down to pay $1 for this contract, I could do a couple of different things. I could preview it before transmitting. It'll show me my max risk and max reward. I could even accept it, and it'll bring it back to this line, but it would have whatever I've created. So if I had added, let's nuke this, right-click, delete, if I had added a condition to this, for example, so let me show you, if I had said that Google needs to be above such and such a price or something like that, and I had added this stock condition that Google had to be above 96 before I wanted this done, as soon as I accept the order, this now has that condition attached to it. Now, you can see this little box here shows that there's a condition for this and it's only live during market hours. And if I hit transmit, this order now goes live, but with the condition having to be met first before this order would go live. So uh, Google stock is what I created the condition on, and we would have all that in place. So that's one way to place your trades, is you could literally just type in the stock symbol, click options, and buy and sell. Now that's kind of a standard, if I wanted to do a single leg, just buy a call, buy a put, quick, easy way to do it. A lot of times as option traders, we want to do a little bit more than that. We might want, for example, to do a spread trade. Now if I type in Google symbol and I come down here to combinations. Now if you don't see this button that says combinations, you need to hit this little arrow and just select combinations. Once you select it once, it'll pull up from that point on. So if I go to the combinations, I can come in here to option combo smart. This is the route that I would take. And what it will do is pull up an order box like this that will help you to build a trade. So let's say that I wanted to trade uh, iron condor. Well, it will help me to build that trade. I can choose the expiration. I can put in the strikes and so forth. We'll just build something here hypothetical. Um, I don't really care what the strikes are, but we build that trade. And now if I like it, okay, February, this and that, and then I select it, it will now pull it up on my screen. 
It will put in each leg individually that you're trading, but here's the whole combo built. So if we isolate this one, you can see what it's going for is around 70 cents credit if we were to trade that iron condor. Uh, this is a point of confusion for some people, that negative pricing. If you don't want that, when you build your iron condors, which will normally pull up with that negative pricing, if you come down here to the flip and you go short iron condor and then flip it to a sell combo like that, and I build the same trade, then it will just show up as a non-negative price. And again, we've got videos on, that explain that, uh, but see, it's the same trade, but now it just conforms to your eye a little bit better. If I place an order to sell this, I'm gonna collect a 65 cent credit or a 70 cent credit for that iron condor and so forth. And so that's a, a point of confusion for some people. Again, watch Maverick's videos on the negative pricing if you're confused by that. If we come back in here and we wanted to build, again, whatever the trade is, there's a drop down list of possible strategies. And it's just a little template that allows you to select which leg you want, which expiration, whether it's calls and puts, and then you put in the strike prices and away you go and it would build that trade for you. So option again, type in a symbol, let's put in Microsoft or whatever, combinations, option combo smart. And then you can build your more complex option strategies that way. And it'll even have a little risk graph there, kind of showing you the standard. So if you did a buy right, which is a covered call, buy the stock, sell a call, well, there's the risk graph for a covered call. If I did a caller trade, I wanted to buy the stock and buy a protective put and sell a call and do it as a caller, well, here's the risk graph. So we've gone through two types. You can type in the symbol, and if you're trading single leg, just click on options. You can type in the stock symbol, and if you're trading a multi-leg, go into option combos, and it'll have the little template here that will help you to build the trade. Last but not least, we could type in a stock symbol. Let's go back to Microsoft. We'll mix it up a little bit. And once I have Microsoft stock on here, I could pull up Option Trader. Now, as I pull up the Option Trader, from here we could build a strategy as well. So I could say, let's say we were going to do a diagonal or something. Well, I can kind of select, well, maybe I want to buy this particular call. And then what I could do, you'll notice here, I've got that call option built. If I wanted to build this trade, whoops, make it so I can see that. If I went into strategy builder rather than, than building it, well, let me go back. We could select others to kind of create this trade. See how it's leg by leg. My preference would actually be to just hit strategy builder first and then as you do it it's gonna help you through that process so let's sell this one against it or whatever now it links those together if we do it under the strategy builder you can see up here it has the debit and it has the price and so forth and if I didn't like this if I somehow did it backwards I could flip them here right I could change what's what but if this is built correctly, and then I could even, and I think this will pop it up on my other screen, but if I hit profile, you're barely gonna be able to see it. But if I squeeze it over here, look at that. So this diagonal call spread that we just built, it gives me a, a profit and loss graph right there. See that risk graph? And it shows in terms of this trade, well, it's bullish. And as you get up towards this level, that's the ideal landing spot, which should be at the short strike, the 285. And then our profit does fall off a bit from there at, as the stock keeps going higher and higher and higher. If the stock goes down, of course, that's where our risk comes in. And the dotted line shows you the early trade. The solid line shows you the at expiration risk graph. So it's a progression thing. You can kind of see how this moves. And then you could even kind of look down here and it gives you a variety of different informational pieces of 
where we'd be at. Well, if it's at current prices, if it goes up 10%, up 20%, and we could change this. We could say, well, we just want to look at 5%. And so here's where it's at here. Here's where a 1% upward move, a 3% upward move, or a 5% upward move, where we're expected to be in profit and loss. Here's where we'd be if it went down 1%, down 3%, down 5% in this trade at these levels. So you can see the reward, the risk, um, the delta, gamma, vega, theta, all these numbers, the Greeks there, and how they're, the progression of this trade looks. Now let's build one more. Again, repetition is fantastic for learning, right? So let's um, let's change up the stock. I could change it up here at the top. Say we were going to trade Uber or whatever, and we're just going to build some hypothetical. Maybe we'll mix it up. Let's do a an April butterfly or something. So I'm going to click buy on that one, and I'm going to buy way out here, and then I'm going to sell this one, and I'm going to change the ratio to two. And is it smart enough to know? Sure it is. See how it built a butterfly right there? I'm buying the outer wings. I'm selling two of the body. Here's my trade. We could even trade from here, of course. We could punch in the numbers. Well, I see that it's going for around this price, but I want to pay you know, less. So I'm going to try to get it in at near the bid or maybe sweeten it up just a little bit above the bid, but not quite at the midpoint and so forth, right? The midpoint would be 453. If I wanted to look at the profile on this, again, I'm going to have to squeeze this over because it'll be on my other screen. But if I minimize this, now I've got a, a, a risk profile, and now I might want to go out 10% or 15 or 20%, you know, and kind of look at this. And so now I need to go out to 30% to really see this risk graph because uh, the way it's built is really targeting an upward move. The stock's down here right now, and it needs to go up. But if it does, there's a big payoff. At current levels, here's where we'd be. If it goes up 10%, there's where we'd be, 20%, and so forth. And then you can change the expiration. You can say, well, what if I get closer? Here's March. Where would I be? Well, I'd be up more money, right? if it makes a 10 or 20 percent move. Notice if it goes up 30 percent though, as is the case with a butterfly, if it overshoots the mark, you start to lose. If it undershoots, if it's bearish, well we're gonna lose, right? And then we can see where we'd be at at expiration. So we can move this all the way forward towards expiration, which was April, I don't remember the exact date, um, anyway, that's close enough. It's getting towards expiration, and you can kind of see where you'd be at. Obviously, in this case, if it's at current levels, if we fast forward a few months and it's still at current prices, we'd be up 157 bucks. If it's up 10%, we'd be up 380. If it's up 20%, we'd be up 175. If it overshoots the mark, we'd lose. If it undershoots, if it's bearish, we were wrong. We would expect to lose money max reward, max risk, all of the different details are kind of shown there within the, the details of the trade. So how did we do it again? We simply claim, came in to the option trader, so you can punch in any stock symbol, and even if you don't have the stock you want, we came into the option trader from here First thing I would do, again, you can click and build, but I would go strategy builder, and then you can just point and click. Hey, I want to buy you know, this one, and maybe I want to sell this one. And you build something out, and you can look at the profile, and you can see what that diagonal spread in this case, whoops, again, we're not going to be able to see it, bring it over, what this diagonal spread looks like, what my max reward, what's the progression of this thing over time and so forth, and kind of play around with it, get a sense of what the trade's going to be, how it's going to work, how it's going to participate in certain environments, and go from there. So pretty fun stuff. Those are your main elements 
Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation is a very robust platform. There's a lot of ways to do the exact same thing. Find the way that best fits your approach. If I know exactly what I want to trade, I'm not going to go into the strategy builder. I'm just going to build it. So if I know that I want the Home Depot butterfly or, or spread or whatever, I just go combinations, option combos, and click on the vertical spread, punch in the details, and away I go. If I'm messing around with it and doing more, hey, what would this look like? What would that look like? Well, then I'm going to go into the option trader. I'm going to click on the strategy builder. I'm going to put in different legs. If I don't like that particular one, I'm going to kill that leg and put in a different one. If I don't like that one, hit the X, put in a different one until you build the structure of what you want and then kind of go from there. You know, here's the price, here's the max risk, max reward, um, all of the details. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a robust platform, but as you get used to it, certainly in, in a demo trader, just point and click, play around with it. In demo trading, you can't cause any problems, right? You can't break it. You're just getting used to the system, getting used to the program. So I hope this video has served to speed up that learning process. So we will leave it there. On behalf of Maverick Trading, I'm Corey Halliday. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.